Welcome. Today we are going to solve a problem which is a very tricky one in physics. And this is where we have a ball traveling through space. It hits a rod. There's no hinges. There's nothing else. It's just a, a rod at rest floating in space. It, the ball hits the rod and the ball slows down and the rod begins rotating and also translating through space. Now, to solve this problem, we are going to need to use linear momentum, angular momentum, and energy. We'll be doing both translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. So I created a little um, animation so that you can help to visualize what's happening here. So make this a little bigger. So here's our ball, which is traveling through space at velocity v. So this ball has momentum, linear momentum, because it's traveling in a line through space. It has angular momentum if we choose an origin to be somewhere else than the ball itself. And in this problem, we're going to choose the center of mass of the rod. So the definition of angular momentum is r cross p. So its linear momentum is to the right on the x-axis and r is perpendicular to that so it will have angular momentum. It also has translational kinetic energy because it's translating through space. So what's going to happen when it hits the rod? And as you can predict the rod will start to rotate but also it will start to translate. So the translational velocity of the rod is actually the velocity of the center of mass. And the rotational velocity is how quickly it's spinning. Now it's said in this problem that uh, there is heat lost and that the collision is not perfectly elastic, which means that the energy that we start with here of the ball is not going to be equal to the energy now. What type of energy do we have? Well, we have linear or translational kinetic energy, translational kinetic energy of the rod, and rotational kinetic energy of the rod. So those three added together are actually going to be less than the translational kinetic energy of the ball before the collision, because some of that energy was converted to heat. Okay, let's get into it. The first question is just a conceptual question. Is linear momentum conserved? Explain. So, linear momentum is conserved when there are no net external forces on the system. In this case, the system is the ball and the rod, and there is no gravity, there are no hinges, there are no other forces involved. So therefore, yes, linear momentum is conserved because there's no net external forces. Angular momentum is conserved when there is no net external for torque on the system. Torque is R cross F, and uh, there are no external net forces, so therefore there can be no net external torques. So part C, find the velocity of the center of mass of the rod after the collision. So what are we looking for here? We're looking for the velocity of this center of mass. Well, the velocity of the center of mass is going to be whatever the velocity is translating at linearly. In other words, we are going to use conservation of linear momentum. So we are going to say the sum of the initial linear momentum is equal to the sum of the final linear momentum. Well, what kind of momentum do we start with? Only the ball has momentum. So it has a mass of m and a velocity of v naught. And after the collision, the ball now has less. So this is m v naught of the ball. And then we have m three quarters v naught of the ball plus 
the linear momentum of the rod. So that's going to be m v com, the velocity of the center of mass of the rod. Okay, very nice. We have m in every term. Ah! 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 We can get rid of those masses. We're going to take v naught, subtract that over, and solve for v com. So we have the velocity of the center of mass of the rod is equal to one quarter v naught. Ah, let me try that again. <laughs> Just getting used to the stylus situation here. Oh man, that's terrible. One last time. Here we go. I'll get it right this time. I promise. Yes. Okay, that's good enough. All right, part D. Find the angular velocity of the rod about its center of mass after the collision. So, angular velocity is going to be how fast it's rotating. That's omega. So, the definition of angular momentum is for a point particle, r cross p, or we can just say mv. So we can use that definition for the ball. Now for the rod, the rod is not a point particle, so the definition we are going to need is i omega, where we're going to use the moment of inertia of the rod. So the law of conservation of angular momentum says that all of the angular momentum before the collision has to equal all of the angular momentum after the collision. So what has angular momentum before the collision? Well, we're using this as an origin. So angular momentum is a quantity only relative to a point. And we're going to call that point right there our origin. We'll say O. So how far from the origin is the ball? Well, the whole length is L. So this distance from here to here is going to be L over 2. So that we can say our angular momentum initial is L over 2 cross mv. So that's going to be m. And our initial velocity is v naught, which is equal to the angular momentum after the collision. So what has angular momentum after the collision? Perpendicular to this point, our cross product is going to be, again, L over 2. And that's going to be M 3 quarters V naught plus the angular momentum of the rod, which we're saying is I omega. So I of a rod pivoting about its center is 1 12th ML squared times omega, and that's omega final. Okay, so we need to clean this up. We have an L in every term, so we can get rid of L, L, and our L squared, one of the L's. And we also have an m in every term, so we can get rid of those. OK. When we clean this up mathematically, we end up with v naught over, no, sorry, we end up with 3 halves v naught over L. And that is equal to omega final. Okay, so that's how fast this thing is rotating about the center of mass. 
Okay, next. Part E, I think. Part E says, find the change in kinetic energy, which is the heat lost. Okay, so to do that, we need to write a conservation of energy uh, formula. So we're going to start with uh, sum of all the energy initial is equal to the sum of all the energy final. Well, what kind of energy are we starting with? Well, we're starting with this ball. It has, it's translating. And then that's going to turn into a lower translational kinetic energy of the ball, a translational velocity of the rod as it translates through space, and a rotational energy plus the heat lost. So what's that going to look like? It's going to look like this. We're going to have Ke trans of the ball initial, which is going to equal Ke trans of the ball final, that's going to be after it hits, plus Ke trans of the rod after, there is only an after, so we don't really need that final, plus Ke rotational, because it's rotating, of the rod, also final, plus the amount that, of heat that was lost in the collision. So to do this, we are going to use our equations 1 half mv squared. So we have 1 half mv naught squared is equal to 1 half, this is the ball after the collision, so that's 3 fourths v naught, but don't forget, all of that is squared, plus Ke trans of the rod. So that's 1 half m. Now, what is the translational velocity of the rod? Let's see. Well, didn't we already figure that out? The translational velocity of the rod is the velocity of the center of mass. So that's v naught over 4. So we have v naught over 4 squared, 1 half mv naught squared uh, over 4, plus, and the definition of rotational kinetic energy, Ke rot, is equal to 1 half i omega squared. So we're going to say 1 half, whoops, don't like that, 1 half i, it's a uh, rod spinning about its center, so we're going to say 1 twelfth ml squared times omega squared. Well, what's its uh, angular velocity? Oh, we just solved it up here. It's 3 halves v naught over L. So we're going to do quantity 3 halves v naught over L and all of that squared plus whatever heat was lost. So the heat lost is going to be this minus all of this stuff. So this ends up kind of becoming a little bit messy here. It, it's just a lot of fractions. If we do this, we get 1 half mv naught squared on this side. And over here, these L's will get squared. So those L's will go away. And when you add it all up, the fractions, you'll end up with 39, at least this is what I got, 39.96 mv naught squared plus q. So we're almost there. We just need to subtract that over. And uh, that ends up being 6, uh, you end up making this, reducing this. So that's uh, 1 half mv naught squared is equal to uh, 13 30 seconds mv naught squared 
you can multiply this by 16 over 16, get a common denominator, subtract that, and what you end up with with a fraction is uh, 3 30 seconds mv naught squared is equal to q, which is also equal to the change in kinetic energy. And that's how you solve that crazy problem. Thanks for watching.